Claudine Gay, who served as the 30th president of Harvard University, had the shortest tenure in Harvard's long history, lasting just six months. This brief period was marked by significant controversies, both during and before her tenure as president. She oversaw Harvard's admission program, which faced legal scrutiny for its racial considerations, something commonly referred to as DEI, which stands for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And while some viewed these initiatives as essential to level the playing field for groups historically denied equal opportunities, others raised questions about the fairness of such measures. Critics argued that granting preferential admission based solely on skin color, especially when candidates were otherwise equally qualified, undermines meritocracy. This perspective contends that it's unfair for a candidate to be rejected simply because they don't belong to a minority group, and that such a policy is actually itself discriminatory. And the Supreme Court agreed, ruling against this program. However, Gay remained committed to other similar practices enforcing DEI. Following George Floyd's death in 2020, Gay initiated a task force on visual culture and signage to address historical racial injustices. This included changing the visual culture of spaces dominated by portraits of, her words, white men, completely ignoring any contributions these individuals may have brought to Harvard, solely because they did not belong to a minority group, which seems to be about as blatantly racist as you could possibly get. In 2022, she implemented another initiative for denaming spaces, programs, or entities deemed racist, reflecting current social justice values. This policy promised that the decision to remove a name was to be based on deep examination and learning, and not just the number of supporters. However, given her track record, it's somewhat difficult to believe any process she would be involved with could be unbiased in nature. Ultimately, calls for her resignation came after she testified before the U.S. House of Representatives Committee about anti-Semitism on college campus following the Israel-Hamas war in October. Her testimony, particularly the reluctance to provide a definitive answer on whether calling for the genocide of Jews would violate university codes of conduct, led to a major public outcry, and for good reason. It shouldn't have been a difficult question to answer, and frankly, it's a bit shocking that someone who reportedly promoted diversity and inclusion had a hard time speaking out against anti-Semitism. But here we are. Over 70 U.S. lawmakers agreed. Gay's reluctance here was completely unacceptable, and they signed a letter demanding her removal as president of Harvard. Gay also faced multiple allegations of plagiarism for her academic work. And while an independent review of her academic work concluded that she had not committed any research misconduct, she did submit corrections for these citation errors, as she calls it. Despite these allegations, the Harvard Corporation has expressed confidence in Gay's leadership. Gay described her decision to resign as difficult beyond words, and mentioned the need to focus on the institution's interests rather than any individual during this time, before elaborating that she had been subject to racist attacks, including deeply personal and sustained attacks, and racist vitriol through emails and phone calls. Gay has also expressed distress over the doubts cast on her commitments to confronting hate and upholding scholarly rigor, which is a bit ironic given her failure to speak out against anti-Semitism. Seems like a failure to confront hate right there. While I understand that Gay wished to address these long-standing issues of equity and representation at Harvard, her efforts were misguided. Harvard has never been a place for just anyone. It's supposed to be an elite institution. That's why people are so proud that they went there. Now, what this really means is that it's a place for rich kids and people who are extremely academically gifted. So if her goal was to provide a more equal opportunity to be accepted at Harvard, she should have focused on charitable efforts to provide better education to those she believed were not receiving it and help individuals from these groups to be accepted based on merit, rather than some sort of dystopian version of Disney's FastPass system to Harvard's acceptance program based on skin color. This sort of heavy-handed approach to solving the issue doesn't eliminate bias. 
It simply shifts the burden onto a different group of people, perhaps showcasing the inherent danger of tribalism. People are often too focused on themselves and the ever-shrinking category of people they identify with. Solutions to these problems shouldn't be a game of hot potato, where you solve discrimination of a minority group by discriminating against another larger group. We're all just people. We don't have to draw lines in the sand, and you can and should fix a problem by working together for the betterment of everyone. Something we'll hopefully see in the next president of Harvard. Because, frankly, people like Claudine Gay, who can't see past their own very obvious biases, shouldn't be in positions of power.